In this video, we're going to talk about how to rewrite a, fun a function that involves trigonometric, uh, trigonometric terms. But this time, we have sines and cosines involved. So we need to, if we can't factor, we can't rewrite and factor, like in the last example, we need to turn everything into the same function. Now, here's the problem. I don't know a really easy way to turn cosine to the first power into sine. But I do know a way to turn sine squared into cosine squared. And that comes from the Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So keeping that in mind, keeping this in mind, if I wanted to find out what sine squared was, I would move this cosine over to the left side. I would subtract it, right? So sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Therefore, I can plug in, for sine squared, I could plug in 1 minus cosine squared of x. And that's my first step to solving this problem. So notice, the only difference is sine squared becomes 1 minus cosine squared. Now I can distribute out the 2. That's 2 minus 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x minus 3 equals 0. And now I can go through and I can combine the 2 and the negative 3. That's all I'm going to do in this next step. So I'm left with negative 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x 2 minus 3 is negative 1. That's equal to 0. Now, if this is me, because I like this first term to be positive, there's two ways I could look at it. Either I could take everything on the left and move it over to the right. I could add 2 cosine squared x, subtract 3 cosine x, and I could add 1, right? Move it all over to the right. Or, if I wanted to, I could change the signs. I'm going to make this positive. I'm going to make this a negative. I'm going to make this a positive because this is what I need to do. At this point, I need to factor. You see, I can look at it if I want to as, maybe it would be easier to visualize, I'm going to lose, use the letter u instead. Instead of saying cosine squared, I'm just going to say 2u squared. And instead of saying minus 3 cosine, I'm going to say minus 3u plus 1 equals 0. This is an easier way to factor. I'm just going to visualize it as this for a second. Now, if I can factor this equation, that means that I can factor this equation up here. Without going through the process of how I factored it, that's another lesson entirely, it turns out that this is, ends up being 2u minus 1, u minus 1. You can check my work on that if you want to on your own. Okay, I need to factor that equation. So if I can factor this, that means that this equation here with the cosines must have factored out as 2 cosine x minus 1, cosine x minus 1 we treat it in exactly the same fashion. So that means I have two possible solutions, two ways to go here. To, to go here. Either 2 cosine of x minus 1 could be 0, or, from this one, cosine x minus 1 is 0, which tells me that cosine of x is equal to 1, or, on this side, cosine of x is equal to 1 half. So now, what I need to do is I need to decide on this problem. I have two quadrants I'm going to be working in. Cosine is positive in the first quadrant. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Same triangle. They have an adjacent side of 1 and a hypotenuse of 2. And if you know what you're doing, you'll use the arc cosine or whatever method to understand this is the square root of 3. This is really 60 degrees. So if this is 60 as well. And that means that my two solutions over here are 60 degrees and 300 degrees. That's from this portion. That's in degrees, of course, so we're not ready to go yet, but that'll work for now. Over here, I'm looking for, and I remember from the unit circle, this is directly related to the x-coordinate on the unit circle. Where on the unit circle do I get an x-coordinate of 1? Well, that only happens right here at 0 degrees. So I have three answers to this problem. It can be 0, 60, or 300 degrees. But I also have the infinite solutions that i got to take care of. So if I was to draw all three of these, let me do it on this for just a second. If I was going to draw all three of these in this one spot, I notice that no straight lines form up, right? 60 degrees, 0 degrees, and 300 degrees. No straight line forms up, so that means I'm going to have three separate answers, and they, they go up in multiples of 2 pi. x equals 0, which I don't need to write. I shouldn't have written it. 0 plus multiples of 2 pi. There's your first answer. Forget the scratch mark. That was supposed to be 0 plus, but you never write 0 plus. That doesn't make any sense. 
It could be pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, plus multiples of 2 pi. And it could be 5 pi over 3, plus multiples of 2 pi. And there's the answer to this problem. Knowing that it said solve, so I was doing an infinite number of solutions. Now, we're not going to do the entire problem here, but I'm going to get you started on the second similar example. See, I have secant squared. Actually, you know what? This is, actually, this is faster, so we'll go ahead and do it. I have secant squared and tangent squared. And so I either need to turn everything into secant squareds or I need to turn everything into tangent squares. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, here, I'll turn the secant, uh, I'll turn the tangents into secant. So I'm going to say then, instead of, oh, excuse me, you know what? I think it'd be easier to do tangent. Tangent, secant squared is tangent squared plus 1. So I'm going to replace the secant squared with tangent squared x plus 1. And write the rest of the problem out as given. Okay? So I turn secant squared into tangent squared. Now that I have everything with tangent squared, I can go and look at this problem. I distribute the 3. I combine my tangent squared, so 3 squared minus 2 squared is going to give me 1 square that's left, tangent squared x, and then I have plus 3 minus 4, that's minus 1, that's equal to 0. That means that tangent squared x is equal to 1, which means that tangent x must be plus or minus the square root of 1. But I know the square root of 1, that's just 1. So I finally solve for x, or tangent x, excuse me. Now, I'm looking all students take classes. I notice it's plus and minus. That means I'm going to have four quadrants that I draw, four triangles. All four quadrants are covered. And each of these has an opposite of one and an adjacent of one. Well, the only way this happens is if we have 45 degree angle triangles. So this turns out to be 45 on the inside in each case. So I have 45 degrees. I have 135 degrees. I have 225 and I have 315. Those are my four angles that I have involved. All 45 degree angles on the inside right here. Right? So now it comes time to answer it. And now I've been saying all along that we have straight lines everywhere, but this one even gets better because if I notice, I go up from 45 to 135, I go up 90 degrees. And from 135 to 225, I go up 90 degrees. And from 225 to 315, I go up 90 degrees. And from 315 over to the next angle, I go up 90 degrees. And so it turns out it's even simpler than this. We only need one value. We're going to list the easiest one of pi over 4. That's 45 degrees. And instead of saying multiple answers like this, pairing in the straight lines, this one goes up by multiples of 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. And so our answer is pi over 4 plus n pi over 2.